My name is Professor Joseph Wunderlich, Professor of Engineering, Architecture, and uh, Computer Science. And this is a lecture on uh, selecting a router, understanding routers. So um, in, in your house or office, you have a, uh, a modem coming in, which connects to an internet service provider. And then you have a router after that, which distributes the signals to the different devices within your house. And this particular article that you see here from PC Magazine, uh, it's a little old now. Uh, it's what I used a couple years ago to buy a new router, but the criteria is the same uh, that you want to consider still today. And in 2020, when I'm recording this, I'm sure it may change in the next hundred years, but I imagine some of the criteria will stay the same if you're listening to this uh, far into the future. So um, you can see the, the criteria here that they use in PC Magazine. PC Magazine, by the way, was a staple of an unbiased uh, testing laboratory for years for Wintel machines, a Windows, and, you know, Windows operating system running on an Intel processor. Uh, so, you know, uh, doesn't really cover Macs, even though Macs have turned someone into a Wintel machine themselves, even though originally they were you know, Motorola processors in their own operating system. Uh, nevertheless, this is a, a good magazine, just like Consumer Reports is a good you know, laboratory, PC testing labs, unbiased professional testing lab. And they allude to, uh, you know, looking at something like this at the bottom here in the yellow, you'll see uh, they mention looking at reviews as we all do from uh, when we buy anything now online that's good but it can be very specific to a particular user's needs and biases and so you really want a, a testing lab a professional testing lab to take a look at what you're doing so let's just look at the criteria that they're uh, looking at here um, you know they have the overall rating after uh, you know at the top and price of course um, then uh, chipset and so you might think about you know, who's manufacturing that and drill down in any one of those. Uh, how many uh, wired ports, right? You're going to have typically a faster connection of wired, connecting things wired directly to the router than wireless. Um, and we all have many devices all over the place now, so you want to keep, or you want to have as many ports as possible. Um, parental controls, maybe doesn't mean anything to you, but if you have children, very like likely um, might and, uh, and some other more specific criteria that you can look at that uh, uh, you can drill down into and see if they mean anything to you so uh, just looking down and what I have highlighted here um, you say you can spend less than hundred dollars if you just need the bare bones uh, if you want extra stuff you're gonna pay a little more it's always the case Go to the next slide. Now in this article, um, first thing they ask is, do you even need a wireless Wi-Fi uh, router? Perhaps if you're just in an apartment complex and you're just connecting your PC up, you can just do a wired thing. But I think nowadays uh, everybody needs Wi-Fi for uh, all kinds of devices, uh, even your TV, and your phone and everything. So. Um, this is really not that valid of a question anymore. Next thing, uh, what type of network user are you? So do you really need uh, to stream a uh, heavy duty gamer, multimedia? I think we all are now. So um, you know, we, we, want, we want more. We always want more. Now wanting more is a standard rather than a luxury of the past. Now, single band or dual band. So uh, there are two uh, frequencies. Uh, uh, now, this is not this is this is not the bandwidth. This is not the bits per second number. This is a frequency. This is a carrier. The carrier wave signals. Uh, the carrier waves are modulated with the uh, communication signals on top. So you have two point uh, four and five five gigahertz bands that you tune into just like on a radio station you tune to a frequency uh, to pick up a radio station and then they discuss the difference between the two here 
Uh, so you probably want dual band nowadays. Uh, and then they're saying 5 gigahertz is less crowded, um, 2.4. Uh, less equipped because less equipment runs on five uh, that changes over time too um, and then that's why it's better equipped for throughput intensive work with your home network such as uh, gaming and file streaming you get better internet performance um, the one downside is five gigahertz doesn't sustain a signal at greater distances so that's something to consider if you have a huge house or running things in the backyard perhaps now the next thing you see is um, the speed so we have uh, this this is the speed now bandwidth people use that term loosely it has a couple different definitions you know bandwidth is a tuning frequency like the carry wave, but it's also used people use that as synonymous with uh, uh, the rate the transmission rates so uh, you want to keep that in mind that people use that term loosely uh, but you know, bandwidth most of the time for most people means speed now, uh, not the tuning to a certain frequency of a carry wave. And the speeds you see here, now those are dated, and so I've superimposed or I've just copied and pasted a 2020 thing right, right over top. So uh, now the, the cheapest ones are going to be you know, 1,000 megabits um, per second. Now, you know, 1,000 megabits per second is a gigabit. So, you know, 1.7, uh, you know, 1,700 megabits is 1 1.7 gigabits per second. So we're talking about, you know, gigs, gig speed, you know, uh, billions instead of millions of bits per second. And then you see the best overall, highest performing, we're up near seven, uh, seven gig now. Um, in certain, uh, you know, we used to consider that uh, in implementing in buildings, uh, uh, the, the 10 gig uh, optical cable wires in IBM, we had optical back 25 years ago uh, because you're connecting the supercomputers together. So you even had a separate processor on the channel for that. So that's nothing new, but for everybody wanting and needing, needing, wanting, I guess they're two different things nowadays. You tend to, to need what you want nowadays because you can get it uh, people want that kind of speed for streaming everything all at once gaming multimedia 10 windows open doing all kinds of things and i'm 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 no uh i i fit right in there too so you know, i've got three computers running right now at home we have actually nine in the house running at any given time i'm vpning into an office machine and then we have the, you know, the television on a fire stick and four phones and uh, using Wi-Fi sometimes. So there you go. Uh, so, you know, we all need the speed now is the bottom line. Uh, and then they talk about standards, protocols here. You probably don't need to worry about this so much. What's nice about standards, oh, well, What's nice about standards is when they become actually a standard is everybody just go, usually goes with one. You can lose some of the uh, free market uh, competition if you standardize too quick. Uh, typically, you want the standards to come from uh, a somewhat unbiased organization like IEEE standards or international standards, ISO. Um, in IBM, we had to have a whole set of documentation, everything for ISO that we sold uh, in Europe and other places. Um, so, but anyway, the IEEE standard, uh, or this, I'm not referring to that here, but you know, there is standards. So this is network protocol standards. And you might consider it sometimes. Here we see some considerations of some other things, including uh, security, we mentioned parental controls, also some flexibility, uh, USB ports, SD card slots, external drive sharing, you're, you're creating a network within your house, you want devices to share um, a drive. And then uh, start looking at specifics here. Um, Netgears, Net Netgears uh, wireless dual band gigabit router, it's the latest, well at that time. So you know, there's some specifics there. 
And you can see uh, they also mention, oh, up above here in other considerations, uh, somewhere in here, they're highlighted, but they're just talking about all the devices I already mentioned. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's down here under Netgear. You have home theater, which we do, uh, uh, you know, all these devices. Oh, I forgot the tablets. Uh, actually, I've lost track of how many computers. I've got three right here. My son's got four. My wife has two for work and a tablet, and my daughter has two. Three, four, three. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot, a lot of stuff. And then we have new, new, new TV with the Amazon Fire Stick, and also the TV has its own built-in uh, wireless communication as well. As, so, so we're taxing our bandwidth, uh, and, and this is right in the beginning of the coronavirus. So, you know, everybody's taxing everything everywhere. We're also the uh, your internet service provider. Uh, we have, you know, the, uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, cable coming in here, which is the fastest. Uh, we used to teach about DSL. Uh, I believe my colleague, Dr. Leap, still has DSL. That's over the twisted pair of uh, copper wires that used to bring in the land lines, not land lines, but the land, you know, telephone dial, you know, plug in the wall thing. Uh, and we had modems we would use on that. And then DSL uses those, but that infrastructure seems to be uh, failing. And, and he's noticed also that uh, he has intermittent communications on his signals. Uh, when he's doing his Zoom teaching, as we all are right now, during the coronavirus of t pandemic of 2020. Oh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, even with this modem, I was maxing out my Minecraft servers. I used to host world servers uh, in, in the house. Now, that, that's more function of the, uh, the bandwidth of the Internet service provider, because you, know, you, you can't go any faster than the weakest link. So you get super high speed in your router and modem but your internet service provider is going slower then that doesn't help a lot so then i ended up paying uh 60 a month to host the servers in new york city and then also in toronto canada and then uh one notch sold for 2.2 billion dollars minecraft to microsoft and then the, all the plugins disappeared and the and the group of developers that uh, would make them uh, didn't have the APIs to develop them, you know, to write to anymore. Uh, I stopped doing that. But that's a whole other story. So, you know, we've always been taxing, taxing the uh, bandwidth, speed bandwidth here in our house. And uh, so we need, we need something quite good and quite fast. Oh, it's also worth mentioning now that the lines coming, like in your neighborhood, you multiplex. That means several people using the same line. So, you know, I'm surrounded by Amish people all around, but they, they well, they don't use the internet, but the, some other some other neighbors on the same line uh, do use quite a bit. My one neighbor's a physicist, astronomer, and he's streaming astronomical data, and he has a big, huge uh, reflecting telescope and a, built a building just for it in his backyard with a sliding roof. And then he, he I could see him using the bandwidth up sometimes, or I could feel it. Well, that's with your internet service provider. So um, the bottom of this sheet, you see the bottom line here. This is talking about this N750 uh, dual, terrific dual band router, uh, 2.5 gigahertz. And the specifics, you know, look in the power and do the job. Blah, blah, blah. Now we're on our last slide here. You see uh, something that uh, my wife and I over the years have gone back and forth with is paying Comcast uh, quite a bit of money. I have two stories here. The first one is uh, we were paying Comcast $7 a month, right? Uh, $84 a year to rent uh, our modem, right? Um, and so what if we buy a modem router together? We needed a new router. Our router broke, uh, hit by lightning. I should unplug everything in lightning storms. We run around the house now, everything. Anything, everything has a chip in it, including the oven, the microwave, uh, everything. Uh, and physically, you know, pull the wires out of the wall. Just don't turn them off. Don't rely on your power strip because electric uh, lightning will just spiral around the outside of the wire. Uh, that is a whole lecture for another time. I'll talk about clean power in a minute. Um, and you know, just, just catching little surges in the power line is not enough. 
Well, there's several a number of things you have to do, and one of them is just collect is is, is uh, prevent those lightning strikes, which will spiral on the outside of a wire. I once got a shock on a telephone line in my ear, and it it was it, I felt it on the outside of the phone as I was holding it. It came uh, spiraled up in an old farmhouse we were in long ago, twenty thirty years thirty years ago. Um, on top of a hill, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, so uh, so here we we notice. Well, why don't we just buy a modem while we're buying a router? So you see that uh, what we're saying here. Um, uh, the other quick story that goes with Comcast too that was worth mentioning is we were paying a hundred and eighty dollars a month to Comcast. Now that's also for our phone service. So we went a hundred and eighty dollars a month. So we went down, we got rid of the cable modem first here, but also the box for the television and all of our Comcast service with all the TV channels that came with it, which we missed a little bit. But then we got an Amazon Fire Stick and then later a brand new uh, large screen TV with its own uh, intelligence built into it, which gives you access to a whole bunch of things. Uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can load... Uh, software and then get access and you get to the internet to uh, channels around the world uh, it, it's a little hard to get the, the sporting things in the local in the local TV stations you can't get that so easy anymore but um, we find that we've gotten to not miss regular TV connection and that was uh it's like seven dollars a month from 180 although we had to pay for the phones I don't have to ask my wife on that she does all the budgeting and bill paying but you know we we discuss and purchase things like we're doing right here in this lecture together um i often drill down and use my research skills but she can do that too uh, especially with things like this um and so you can see what we purchased here so um the modem to replace uh we got this one here and you could see that we considered uh, another one here, but we ended up picking, uh, you know, the one you'll see, you know, based on the speeds we need and, uh, and uh, price, you know, cost-benefit ratio, knowing we needed lots of speed and we've only been growing and growing on the, the needs, you know, multifaceted high bandwidth needs. And now during the coronavirus, my wife and I are both working from home my son's college student learning from home, my daughter's high school student learning from home. And so the whole world now is online. Good thing this virus didn't hit uh, 20 years ago. Uh, people wouldn't be doing things online to the extent they are now. Um, yeah, 25 years ago, I, I paid when I was at IBM, I paid for two, two wired, hardwired phone lines into my house so that I could have one to connect to the IBM uh, intranet. We had our own intranet inside of IBM, uh, leased optical cables between cities and under the ocean, you know, hardwired, uh, secure intranet. And then I could dial into that with uh, one phone, hard, a wired phone line to my house with the modem. And then I had another line just so I could talk to the other researchers and the programmers and people on the test floor. Other engineers actually supervised. I supervised an engineer in Austin, Texas. I never met him, but he ported the stuff that I developed for the System 390 supercomputers that also got ported to the uh, AS400s in Minnesota. I didn't supervise the people that did that, but I did supervise one engineer in Austin, Texas over the IBM intranet, dialed in from my home office 25 years ago in upstate New York. And, uh, and he was he was translating everything into from uh, I was in PLX and System 390 assembler into which is like Fortran mixed of Fortran Pascal with case statements uh, PLX and, and assembly language to uh, the RS 6000 which was an AIX Unix is an IBM version of Unix operating system and into C which uh, and I know C also. Uh, at the time. So it wasn't C++ or Java back then. This is I'm talking about 25 years ago. Uh, even longer now. Uh, 25 years ago. So anyway, um, 
this is how you decide to purchase things nowadays, or you should. Uh, we're not talking about designing these systems, but you should know, you know, all this if you're designing these systems too, of course. But as a consumer, this is the level of information you should know. As an information systems major, you probably need to know this type of decision analysis more than the computer engineers, more than the computer scientists, because you very likely will work up to being a chief information officer, and then you will need to make these kind of decisions and you know convince others to buy everything, maybe a million units, or I mean, a million would be a lot, but thousands. You know, IBM had 450,000 employees when I was there, 450,000. You can imagine their chief information officer. You save a couple pennies, you multiply that by 450,000. Uh, and you don't need, not everybody needs a router, but you understand the scaling of every everything. Um, so that is enough of this topic.